Welcome to Will at Work. I'm Kevin. Uh, today we're looking at the Game King. This is a little bit more obscure of a game system. Uh, not well known, even among people who collect game systems, like me. Although not completely unknown, but probably won't show up on a lot of other gamers' lists. Uh, this was released in Hong Kong and it came out around the same time as Game Boy type systems. Uh, there's actually three Game Kings. Uh, this is the first one, which is the most common. It's a black and white system that takes cartridges and uh, these games are not necessarily clones, they're rip-offs for the most part, but uh, they are unique to the Game King, making it a unique game system, not some sort of clone system. Uh, there's a second Game King, which is also in black and white, uh, from what I understand, that's shaped like a PlayStation Portable. So it came out a little bit later, compatible with the same games, just a different design. So to me, that's just a variant and not something I'm looking to collect. Uh, they are out there. Occasionally you can find one. Uh, then there's the Game King 3, which is in color, backwards compatible with previous Game King games. I'm not sure if the color games will work on the original Game King, and that all the color system is doing is adding color. Uh, I don't have the third one. The third one is probably the rarest uh, of the three, although I'm not sure how rare we're talking here because I don't know production numbers. My guess is they probably made a lot of them and they, being Hong Kong, could probably still produce them today if they wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it's highly desired or anything like that. Um, you know, there's a sort of a fine line on some things like this when you're collecting because of the, the sort of knockoff quality of these um, you know but I tend to try and get everything I can, can and can afford that qualifies in my particular list of what a video game system is and this is one of them so I bought this new old stock but uh, let's go ahead and open it it's currently sealed. I'm going to use a screwdriver here to cut, cut this piece of tape. Okay. I'll take it out here. Now, it's supposed to come with three games built in as well. The English on the box is your typical terrible, uh, including three game categories, total 37 games. It is compatible Game King game cards. Miner, 2003, and Drifter. 2003 was the future back then. There it did come in an assortment of colors. I did ask for the purple one. Uh, <coughs> Drifter. According to the recording of history, there was an island called, or named Gold Island on the Pacific Ocean, storing the enormous treasures. So the tramp drives the ship to seek the island alone. After long-term vagrancy, the Tramp found the island eventually, but they are facing various monsters and obstacles on the island. Probably a platform game of some sort. This is in focus. Okay. 2003. Someday in 21st century, our marginal sea were suffered, the attack of enemies playing suddenly. For sovereignty of safeguarding our motherland and territorial integrity, our 152 Air Force team received the order and launched a soul-stirring air battle with the enemy. And then Miner, it says, In one accident, Nanny enter into the evil spirit world. After experiencing all sorts of difficulties, Nanny found the time channel to get back to the modern society at last. However, there are 25 toll gates in the channel, and there are various evil who are defending each toll gate. In order to come back, Nanny used the modern weapon to defeat the various kinds of evil. That's some thrilling shit right there. Alright. Let's take it out of the plastic. 
systems with a manual that's got to be absolutely worthless. All right, so the screen is not that large, right? I mean, it's you know, it's, it's down to a bevel. It's a little standard-looking LCD screen. Got a D-pad. Actually, it doesn't feel that bad for a D-pad. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't feel bad. A and a B button, and there's a couple bumpers up here, but they don't move. I guess they're just there for looks. If they do anything, I'd be surprised. I think it's mostly just like a Game Boy Advance ripoff looking design. And there's the cartridge port. Now, it didn't come with cartridges, but like I said, it's supposed to um, have three games built in. Let's take the battery cover off and pop in a couple of triple A's. Let's see what we got. Do, 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 do. How do we turn this on? Ah, down here. We have a contrast and a volume. Alright, so we've got a it's like a standard matrix display. It's pretty limited. This is a step up from say um, a uh, micro vision, but I would say that um, yeah, this is way below Game Boy Advance quality here. Oh, there's a start button. Drifter. Round one. Get ready. So it's like some sort of really bad platform game. Wow. Oh, I can throw a banana. Hmm. It's kind of blurry as you move. Now, I mean, this is one of those things where you have to think about the time and, you know, what was the Game Boy really expensive in Hong Kong? Probably. Was this really cheap? Probably. This might have fit the bill for somebody that couldn't afford something like a Nintendo handheld. I will say though that the large uh, large graphical, uh, since there's no backlighting, the large graphical elements here uh, are yeah you know makes it easy to see there's like no problem there all right let's um let's go back this is, this is game king time top it's like 2003 So this is going to be like a really bad 1942. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, I already died. So much for the war. This is almost unplayable. Okay, we get the idea. That's awful. And minor. Mine battle. Okay, let's just have to do with a nanny. Oh, this is like Bomberman. Killed myself. Looks like it might be uh, procedurally generated. Yeah, 
Yep. Okay. Well, there's not much else to say about this. Uh, Game King. Now you know why you've never heard of it. But there are actually quite a bit of games made for this thing. It seems like it was probably pretty simple for them to develop for it. And uh, they probably had, um, you know, were able to churn out games pretty quickly and make clones of games, cheap clones, etc. And sell them for cheap. And maybe it was enough at that point that they could um, make a little bit of a profit. Since I doubt this thing's running on anything very expensive hardware-wise. You know, they could probably sell it for 20 bucks or something and sell games for you know, $5 each or whatever it was back in those days and um, make a little bit of money. And then by the time they probably got to the color one, everybody had moved on to Game Boy and uh, forgot all about Game King. So, it's a keeper, it works. It's weird, but it's one for the, one for the history books. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.